Hey guys, it's Nerd Nick, and this is the Sonic Series NNP39 build video. I want to start off with a little bit of a disclaimer. Um, I'm not a professional. I don't do this for a living. I'm just I'm just a guy um, who who loves building planes. Um, I don't have a sound guy. I don't, I don't really have a camera guy. Uh, my beautiful wife is helping hold the camera now, but um, I, I'm really it's just me. I'm, it's just me doing all the editing, all the designing, all the building. So please, guys, uh, excuse any mistakes or, or any quality issues you might see in this video. Uh, again, I'm just trying to bring you guys some cool stuff that you can enjoy. So a couple things you guys are going to want to know before you get started. The first one is make sure you have all your pieces cut out, all your build materials and, and supplies ready, as well as your aluminum cut. Uh, and, and all your plans uh, already 50% score cut uh, and just ready to get going. Second thing you want to note is I only filmed each step once. So you'll be responsible for repeating the process on the other side, as well as accounting for any glue uh, drying time. Also, you won't see me test fitting anything. I definitely did that in the build process, but just to save time on the video, I skipped those steps. So you'll want to make sure you test fit everything before you commit to glue. This is an advanced build, so this video is for reference only. With that being said, I won't be pointing out every single detail as I go along. On a quality note, I'm literally wearing a camera strapped to my neck, and this took some getting used to. So the video definitely gets better as it goes on, but in the beginning, there were some times where the parts got out of frame. The video is fast paced and is chopped up into a lot of little pieces, so there are some flow uh, issues that you might see. Now this was done on purpose because the video was just too long. When I first edited it, it was over two hours long and I, I didn't want anyone to, to see the video of me flying this thing, see the video of other people's building it and get excited and then see the build video be two hours long and get discouraged. So I really chopped it up and it's really fast paced so you're going to be using the pause button a lot but again that was just to save time. And always remember guys, it's just foam. So have fun and enjoy your Sonic Series NMP39. So jumping right in, the first thing that we're going to do is remove the paper from all your beveled areas on the wing. This helps the cuts go a little bit easier since now you don't have to cut through any paper. Next you're going to take your hot glue gun, once it's nice and hot, and drive the tip right down into the foam so that you melt it about halfway. And you're going to do this on the servos and on the top wing where your aluminum is going to be embedded. If you're not planning to build with the Fun Fighter power setup and you plan to use the Mighty Mini power setup, you do not need the aluminum cutouts. So you can skip melting the foam on the top wing and you can skip removing the foam here on the bottom wing. Take your barbecue skewer and don't puncture the paper on the bottom wing but just run your barbecue skewer over it to crease. On the top wing, you are going to crease completely to really loosen up this area. Next we're going to bevel the leading edge. The first stroke I'm focusing my razor on the bottom half so that I don't cut through the paper. I want a nice clean 45 and then I'm going to come back with a second swipe and I'm going to make sure my bevel extends all the way to the paper line. This will ensure I have the correct airfoil fold over. We're going to do that now by folding over the wing. This gives us a nice round edge on the leading edge. So now, when we work on the actual bevels, one of the tricks I have here is I like to lay my cut mat and my piece of foam just a small way from the edge. And I'm actually going to take my knife, and you can do this with the razor blade too if you'd like. A knife just is a little easier, you have more surface area. And I'm pressing and focusing my, my, the weight of my blade on the cut mat. And because the edge of the foam is slightly off 
from where the cut mat is, I can press down with force and not go too deep, not cut into the paper, not get the wrong angle. So on that first swipe, all I'm focusing on is to make sure I get a clean, sharp edge. I'm going to go back with additional passes now and clear out the rest of my foam. And essentially what, I, what I'm trying to do here is from the paper line to the complete edge of the foam, I want a smooth transition from one sheet of foam thick down to none. So I'll do as many passes as I need to make sure that this is accurate. It's really important that you get these bevels as similar as possible because this is what really gives some of the airfoil its shape. For the tip of the wing, I'm going to do the same process of focusing my blade to first clear out the foam towards the end of the cut so that I have a nice sharp edge at the end of the paper. And then I'm going to work my way with deeper cuts to get the rest of the angle cut. Again, you can use a razor blade on this process. It's just a little bit harder because the cuts are so deep. Another thing that you can do if you're safety conscious, because this is definitely not the safest thing you can do, as you see I'm cutting towards my hand, towards my body. Um, I'm very careful, um, but this is not the safest way to do this. If you get a nice sanding block with some um, maybe 200 grit sandpaper, you can go about this a little bit safer. It'll take you a little longer and you're going to make a bigger mess, but you don't risk cutting yourself. Here I'm going to use the razor blade just to do a more, some more fine cuts. It's a little bit sharper than that knife, so I can, I can really get on this, uh, this wing tip and get it nice and clean. If I don't clean the edge up all the way to the paper so you can see I've actually removed some of the uh, foam so you expose the paper, then your, your tips uh, and the trailing edge won't be as sharp. So if you want a nice clean trailing edge, make sure you clean up the foam all the way down to the end of the paper. Okay guys, so now I have my aluminum spar. I've already cut it halfway down in the middle and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do my bend. Um, essentially I'm closing the gap here. The aluminum flexes and then it touches itself so that any G's put on the wing will be pushing up against the aluminum. It makes it very strong um, and it gives me the right dihedral here. If you're not building to use the Fun Fighter setup, you can skip this step. The aluminum is not needed. But if you will be using the Fun Fighter setup and going at high speeds over 100 miles an hour, this is required. So I've laid down glue on one side, I've squeegeed it out. Be very careful when you press down the aluminum, it's going to be hot, the heat transfers quickly from the glue to the aluminum. One thing to note, once you've glued this second side in, the wing is permanently bent. You cannot flatten it, so as you're working with it, just be aware, don't press on both sides of the wing at the same time, or you will crease the foam. So here I'm gluing in former one. This goes on both crease lines, just on the inside, so it does not go on the outside of the crease line towards the leading edge, it goes in the middle. And the next one, I don't show it very well here, but you're going to glue it in the same way, and then I'm actually going to glue it to the aluminum. So first I glue it to the foam, and it's right above the crease line, and then I kind of tip the foam forward so that I expose a gap here, and now I'm going to glue in uh, so that the foam actually sandwiches to the aluminum. This is where the aluminum gets a lot of its, its twisting strength. This helps keep it rigid under force. Now we're going to glue in our second formers. These ones go toward the wing tip. So the tip of this former should line up with the bevel cut. And the way that these install is the paper of this piece runs trailing edge to leading edge. So the part I'm touching there is cut foam. Now we're going to go ahead and fold the wing over to make sure it fits. Now this part's really important because if you don't have a good enough crease set on your bottom wing, which I did not, 
you need to relieve a little bit. So I'm opening them up here because I need a little bit more bend. And, and the bend is judged by whether or not the aluminum matches up with the top aluminum groove that we've cleared out with the foam tip or with the hot glue tip uh, and we melted. So, so the trailing edge needs to line up when I fold over, which is part of your indicator. And then the aluminum needs to notch into the top groove that we cut. And I'm going to show that here. If you don't line up like that, then you're going to have problems. The wing's not going to line up right and your airfoil is going to be off. The biggest thing to remember here is that your wings are the same on both sides. So if you had a little bit of the trailing edge overlap or you didn't fold it over perfect, that's okay. As long as both wings are pretty much the same. If they're not the same, you will run into problems at high speed because you're essentially creating a different airfoil on each wing. With the servo now, what I want to make sure is when I press it into place is that it, it is flush with the top of the aluminum. If for some reason your servos are bigger, you need to move, remove more foam or melt more foam so the aluminum and the top of the servo are flush. Once I've ensured that, I'm going to go ahead and glue it in place. Now to make sure this cable stays out of the way, I'm going to run a piece of tape here just to keep it in this canal. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do the wing fold over. So glue your leaning edge, glue your top servo area, glue where the aluminum is going to go, and then run a piece of glue or bead of glue down each former. We're not going to do the trailing edge yet. Now the important thing again is that we make sure all of everything lines up. So the aluminum needs to notch, the trailing edge needs to be lined up, and then also we need to make sure that the wing doesn't cock any. So I'm going to fold both over at the same time just to make sure that my alignment's right for the wings. And then I'm going to let go of that other half that I'm not gluing and then focus on making sure everything's lined up. I've got to do a little bit of adjustment here and now it's good. We're going to go and hold this until it dries. Now that the wing halves are glued together, we're going to go ahead and seal the seam here in the middle. Just force a little bit of glue down, no one's going to see this, clean it up, and then we're going to focus on the trailing edge. Now what I'm doing here is I'm getting my glue gun in basically as far as I can and running a bead of glue deep inside of the wing, essentially at where the bevel starts. And then I'm going to run a second bead, a lighter bead, right on the trailing edge. Now when I lay the wing down, what I'm trying to do right now is just spread out the glue. I'm just working it slowly so the glue gets everywhere. And I'm putting pressure from the middle of the cord down towards the wing, or down towards the trailing edge. And then with a piece of foam, just so I don't burn myself right now, I'm just rubbing it, massaging it, and I keep moving the wing so that I don't glue it to the table. You should end up with a very clean, very straight trailing edge. Now for the wing tip, we're just going to do one layer of glue, but I kind of move it around here just to make sure I get everything going. You don't want a lot of glue here. If you put too much, it will spill out everywhere and you're going to burn yourself, which I definitely did. So use a scrap piece of foam to, uh, to scrape it out to get the excess glue out of there. But this piece is really important. What you, what you want to do is focus your energy on, on the tip. You want to kind of massage around so that the glue spreads out. And then really, I'm not pressing hard um, a, a few inches up. I'm, I'm really focusing all my, my um, pinching pressure right on, the, right on the trailing edge or right on the tip of the wing. And what this is going to do is it slowly just sandwiches it down. And I don't want to press too hard in one area at one time. I'm doing very light touches and I'm moving constantly. I never press in the same place twice. Otherwise you'll make divots. And once you start a divot, uh, you cannot get it out really because it, it, the glue grabs on, it sucks it in, uh, and you get a wavy, divoty kind of experience. 
So take your time with this and it'll come out really clean. Ideally, you would focus the top wing and the bottom wing together so that they meet in the middle. You don't want to have it flat on the top or flat on the bottom. They kind of meet in the middle together. This is very much a feel thing, so just take your time. And whatever you end up with on the, with the one wing, make sure you recreate that same on the other. You want them to be as symmetrical as possible. So there's your completed wing. It looks great. Okay, so for the aileron, you're going to go ahead and open up your template, flip your wing over, and then lay it over, over top. What I've done here is I've just taken my utility blade and just made tiny little notches to indicate where my cut lines go. You could use a pencil here, you could do whatever you'd like. Essentially, I'm just indicating on the wing where I need to cut. Now with this first cut, I'm just going to break the paper, but ultimately we need to cut all the way through to the, um, the top side without cutting the paper. So I'm going to do a couple cuts to make it through the first layer of foam, the second layer of foam, and ultimately run my blade right up to where the paper is on the back side. These are full cuts, so we'll go ahead and cut those through. And then slowly I'm going to break open the aileron. We're going to go ahead and bevel this. You don't need much throw at all. So just a millimeter or so into the top sheet there. But you're actually cutting through both layers of foam. So take your time. Get a nice clean bevel. You want to use a hot glue hinge here or reinforce this with tape, however you want to go about it, just to ensure this doesn't come apart later in flight. This is about all the throw you're going to need, but use the throw gauge included in the plans to make sure you have the right throw set. I like to use a barbecue skewer here just to open up this hole. You could definitely run another cut with the razor blade. This seems to work pretty well. This just gives it enough clearance so it, as it deflects it doesn't catch. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the fuselage now. You should already have it all cut all your channels removed and the paper removed uh, from the proper areas. We're going to take out the bottom hatch and we're going to go ahead and lay the barbecue skewer in first. So run your glue at a 45 from the beginning of the cut all the way to the wing or the, the nose tip and put your skewer in. Now what's important here is that you still leave this channel open. We need to do our, our, our fuse fold over so I'm using a scrap piece of foam here to make sure I still have my full foam thickness between the skewer and the top plate. Any excess glue that may have squeezed out onto the paper between the, the top plate and where the hatch goes, go ahead and clean that out as well. We'll need that to be cleaned to fold over later. 
Now we're folding over these tabs. These are to protect the nose. It reinforces a little bit, but it also prevents the paper from lifting. So I'm just throwing a little bit of glue and I'm just folding these over. Really adds a lot of strength. Makes it look really clean too. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do our fuse fold. So I'm running glue on the first part of the top plate, here on the paper by the skewer, and then on the bottom plate here where the servo goes. Now, the tail raises a little bit, so I need to hang the tail over the edge of the table, and I'm using my tape here to square it. I'm gonna hold flat, wait till it dries. Uh, one of the things that you wanna make sure you do uh, is keep the tail section and the nose section flat together. Now I didn't do a good job at beveling before I built the fuselage, so go ahead and bevel your tail section. And then with the nose piece here, we're gonna go ahead and remove paper so it bends, and then we're gonna do our fold over. And again, this is to prevent paper lifting and gives a little bit more strength. All right, we're gonna go ahead and glue at a 45 here for the nose belly. And this should set flush against the front of the nose and then right up to where the cutout is for the wing. Do note that the sidewalls are different lengths on the fuselage. The nose should line up properly. Go ahead and use the table as your friend and get that glued down. We're going to go ahead and secure this tab in the back now for the, uh, for the tail. This is where your servo is going to go. Use a little extra glue. Make sure you clean that up. Just throw some glue in there and pinch it shut. Now for the tail section on the belly, make sure you do your crease there right behind the wing and then do add a 45 glue, glue here. This one lines up flush with the wing cutout. And then we'll go ahead and flip it over and use the table as our friend. Gluing the wing now, we're going to apply glue to all areas of the cutout on both sides. These tabs really help with strength and also for alignment. It can be difficult to line the wing up correctly without them. Okay, I like to turn the wing upside down with the fuse to line it up initially. You can do this however you'd like. We just gotta get the tabs in the holes and put some pressure down there while it glues. I like to run back over with one extra bead just to make sure the wing is secure. Now we're gonna go ahead and bevel the elevator. Again, you do not need much throw, so check your throw gauge, but here you need about a millimeter and a half or so of cut. And again, I'm focusing the blade on that center hinge so I don't cut the paper, but I want it clean and uh, flush right up against it. So I get a nice smooth deflection. We'll go ahead and do our hot glue hinge. Again, this is pretty much required. If you do not do this, your elevator will separate from the paper at some point, hopefully when you're not in the air. So definitely do your, your hot glue hinge here. Okay, so for the barbecue skewer, we're gonna go ahead and clean off the channel here just like we did on the aluminum for the wing and make sure it's nice and clean. And we're gonna throw our barbecue skewer in there and get it glued down. So we'll add glue first, fill the channel completely, and go ahead and press the skewer in. And 
Now it's really important as this dries that you hold it flat. Because you removed foam and you shoved the barbecue skewer in, it's possible that you have a little bit of concave going on. Holding it flat ensures the airfoil isn't messed up. So we're going to go ahead and glue the vertical stabilizer to the horizontal stabilizer. This 50% cut is just to allow the vertical to fit in. So we're going to add a little bit of glue. We're going to clear it off. And we're going to use my 90 degree guide again, my tape, to make sure it's nice and square. We're going to go ahead and close up this gap that we, uh, that we created. And then we're going to glue the bottom piece here in line with the rest of the stabilizer. So gluing the vertical and horizontal stabilizer on is really simple. Go ahead and throw your glue on all the contact surfaces here and then fit into place. The important thing to note is that your horizontal stabilizer and your wing need to be at the same uh, same level. They need to be nice and square. So once you put it in place, go ahead and look down the fuselage and make sure that the angle of the wing and the angle of the stabilizer is the same. I've got to tweak mine here a little bit to make sure it's nice and level. and we'll add a little bit of extra glue here to reinforce. Now to glue the back area where the stabilizer sits, just put a couple drops of glue in and then just pinch it shut. Makes a nice clean taper look. Go ahead and clear out the exhaust here, if you haven't already. And now we're going to glue in our back former. This is to help the tail be nice and rigid. You get a little bit of flex without this. It just slides right into place. For your formers, this is the traditional style where it's going to glue it in place. Your front former is a little bit different style. It has a paper overlap. You're going to glue on the bottom of the former and then on the paper overlap. And essentially this closes up the nose a bit and prevents the paper from lifting. So put it into place and then go ahead and roll the paper under, underneath. We're going to do the same thing for the next former. This one has a split set of paper and this is so the hatch can still notch back into place. But we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and put it into place and then fold the paper underneath. Now this one is important that you get it lined up because the hatch has to sit back inside of here. So if you don't line it up right, you can get a hatch that's either too tight or not tight enough. So follow the plans as precisely as you can. want to make sure the former is straight up and down as well. Add a little extra glue because this one is going to get some wear and tear as you remove the hatch over and over so you want it to be nice and stable. Now I didn't film putting in this uh, back former with the magnet but it's pretty straightforward. The magnet should face towards the tail section though. So we're going to go ahead and create the intake now. The P39 has a cool intake that sits behind the pilot because the motor is actually aft in this, uh, in this plane. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and remove the paper from both the top and the bottom. The top piece is smaller. I'm going to apply a small bit of glue here. You can use contact glue if you like. Hot glue works fine. I'm going to glue these together. And then really, 
this this next bit of shaving is is all done by feel. I've included a oblong circle that's roughly the the shape of the intake on the real P39. You can tape that across the front here to give you a guide. Uh, if not, you can just do it do it by hand. I'm going to start with doing 45s, 45 degree cuts on the bottom piece. So this is the piece that's going to get glued to the the plane, and this is also the longest piece. So do nice 45s here. Uh, and then I'm going to do the same thing on the top two edges. Just do 45 cuts. And this one I'm going to cut a little deeper towards the end because the, the top does taper down um, as we get closer to the, the end of the intake. And then on the sides here I'm going to try and clean up the foam so these meet together now. Since they were different sizes, so we're just shaving a little bit of foam on the sides to make that connection flush. So for the top, we're going to dig in and, and have the top piece and the bottom piece kind of meet now about halfway um, the length of the, the intake. And again, this is done by feel. It, the, the regular scoop just has a nice kind of curve to it. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the full size intake. So I'm just trying to replicate that as best I can. Um, just slowly kind of whittling this down. Now looking at the front, I've got kind of a boxy shape here. So I'm just going to do some, some more long, uh, long shavings here to kind of round this out. It should be kind of a wide circle uh, shape when it's done. And the top should taper down to the bottom and the sides should just be a nice round, round shape. So there you go, there's your completed intake. We're going to go ahead and set that aside for now. Alright, so with the hatch, we're going to take our magnet and make sure that one, we have the magnet placed the right way. So go ahead and test that and then glue it into place. Then we're going to throw some glue on these attached formers and fold them over. Uh, make sure you don't have any any glue spilling out because what we're going to do next is we're going to take this hatch and we're going to set it inside of the fuselage here to make sure that our angles are correct. So just in case you tipped one of the formers on the fuselage, you know, the wrong angle or it's too tight or something, this is where you can make adjustments. So I'm going to hold this in place just so I know exactly what angle the formers need to be and then I'm going to go ahead and let it dry and pull it out. Then we're going to take the bottom plate that we cut out from the fuselage and we're going to put it back in. This should be nice and snug. If it's too tight, you want to open it up a little bit, go ahead and do that, but it should be snug. So we're going to put that flush because we're going to throw some glue now and we're going to attach it to the bottom of the hatch. This helps the hatch have a nice solid seal and makes it incredibly strong when it's, in, when it's installed. The fuselage is basically just as strong as if the hatch wasn't even there. So we're going to hold this down, get it nice, and square it up and then we're going to let it dry and pull it out. Let's go ahead and test fit it, make sure it's still so everything is clean and good. There it is, fits nice. We're going to go ahead and cut the hole out for your servo. Just place your servo, draw around it so you get the rough idea uh, and then go ahead and, and cut that out. This is going to sit against the sidewall so that the servo uh, arm lines up with where I have my uh, hole cut out in the back former. I'm going to be running a straw through it to, to guide the push rod. So 
So with the straw, this is just a coffee straw. I've got it lined up and I've cut it here just so it's, it's long enough to attach to the vertical stabilizer and then make its way through this hole in the former. And we'll just throw a little glue on here to tack it in place. We'll do the same thing on the vertical stabilizer side. Now you can put your servo wherever you want. If you don't like it running up top, you're welcome to move it. There is no right answer. This just seems to be the easiest. Get my wire ready here, do my bend, and I'm going to go ahead and push it through the, the straw. I'm just lining this up so that I can go ahead and cover this tail section with my poster board and not have to worry about it. Now for the tail section, I'm throwing a little piece of tape here just as a guide. I'm going to be using glue, but essentially I'm lining it up, making sure it's nice and uh, nice and uh, even. There's very little overlap, so you don't have any room for error here, so take your time. The tape is, again, just there to help me uh, keep it lined up. So I flip it over. I throw down my glue first on the formers because the paper dries the glue really fast. And one thing to note, this back former, you can just throw glue on, throw it on the stabilizer, and then on, on this former here, we're going to be very gentle with the glue. We don't want overlap or anything. We want this to be clean. And now we're going to throw our glue on the, the actual poster board. Now we'll go ahead and fold this over. Once it's glued in place, I'll take that tape off. So again, one thing I want to make sure is that the former there with the magnet is clean. It doesn't have any over overspill of glue. If it does, go ahead and clean it off. And then we'll go ahead and clean up our, or glue down our other side. But get the glue cleaned up before it dries. Okay, so for the front we're going to do the same process. I'm going to throw a little tape on there to line it up and then I'm going to throw my glue here on former B and again I do not want any spilling of glue over because this uh, this section is really important um, because the hatch has to line up here and it, it's going to be snug so any any glue that spills over I'm going to clean up but in, in, in this one the poster board overhangs over the former B. There is a gap okay but you don't want to glue all the way, let's say I'm pinching the glue out here, I want to make sure there's a little bit of an open space because the hatch sits down underneath so I don't glue all the way up to the tip of uh, where former B is. But the poster board should be flush with the nose and then overhang over po uh, former B just slightly. So we're going to go ahead and clean out any glue that may have spilled over now. And it's actually pretty clean. Alright, let's go ahead and test fit the hatch. Make sure it still lines up. Mine's getting pretty snug, but I like the fit. Feels good. Alright, so for the midsection poster board, we're going to go ahead and join this gap. And then we're going to cut off the extra tape here. gives the poster board a nice little curve. And now the front section has the tab, which is where also this cut is, so those, those two line up. And then I need it to be flush. The poster is going to be flush with this front section, so the former B, and then with former C it's going to overhang. So to do this I'm going to take some glue and I'm just going to tack uh, the poster board down in the center of both the former A, I'm sorry, former B and former C. So we'll do a little bit of glue there. 
And this is going to give me some work time to align everything. Again, we want the poster flush on the front here, former B, and then overhang on former C. Any excess glue that spills out, make sure you clean up on both, both the formers. Okay, we're going to go ahead and finish up gluing the poster board to the former now. And again, make sure you clean up any excess that spills out. We're going to use the table as our friend and go ahead and roll it here just to cool the glue down a little bit before it burns your hands. Now I've got a little excess poster board here. I'm going to have to go back and clean this up. First, let's go ahead and glue four more C down. And clean out the extra glue. and then go ahead and attach the sides. So we'll run a thin bleed, bead of glue and then use a piece of scrap here to clean out anything that's spilled over. So I had a little bit of extra overhang here. I'm going to take my razor blade and just clean it up. This is former B, and again, this needs to be flush. Let's go ahead and test fit. It's getting even tighter. That's a really snug fit. Now it'll it'll loosen up a little bit at, at, with use, but it's a little tighter than I like. So what I'm going to do is add a little pull strip here. I'll come back with some better tape, but for now I'm just using some white tape. Um, basically, this is going to help me just get a little leverage from underneath, so I don't damage the foam or anything as I'm trying to pull this out. All right, so for the canopy guys, I'm using clear overhead transparency. You can use a pop bottle uh, container. You could use uh, just poster board. You can use uh, anything you'd like really. Uh, what I'm doing is taking some um, clear tape here and I'm closing up the gaps uh, and the tape's on the outside here so the curve, you know, curve's going around. But essentially what I'm doing is just holding this into place so that I can do a permanent set of glue. Um, so we'll close up the gap, again tape on the outside, and then we're going to go ahead and flip this over and we're going to lay a bead of glue right down the seam on each of the uh, the four cuts so that the glue uh, bonds to both sides of the the canopy here. Let the glue dry uh, thoroughly before you move on to the next one. Okay, so once you've done that on all four, we're going to go ahead and remove the tape from the outside and it's going to leave us with a real clean canopy. What you can do now is you can either mask this up and tape it and paint it, excuse me, or you can use, I like to use electrical tape, uh, just thin strips of it and do my, um, my lines for my, my canopy. Um, for right now, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and tape this in place for show, but later I'll go ahead and uh, clean this up and I'll, I'll glue it uh, onto the, uh, the uh, hatch here. But again, for now, I'm just going to tape it into place just so you get the effect. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and reinstall the hatch and then we're going to glue on 
our intake. Now this is going to line up essentially, it's, it's in the center, but it's going to um, almost touch the overhang of the poster from the hatch. So you're going to bring it right up to the tip of the, of the hatch there overlaying and then you're going to glue it on. It's important that you, you know, put the hatch back on before you do this so that you don't install this intake too far forward and block the hatch. Okay, now, so that for the fairings, what we're going to do is we're going to take the bottom and the top, and we're just going to kind of glue them together in this one corner. I'm just smearing the glue around so I don't burn myself. But we're going to hold that, let it dry, and then essentially we're, we're going to take and slowly work our way from um, this corner up to the other corner of the, of the bend here. And we're, we're going to lay down just a, you know, a half an inch of glue at a time, and we're going to focus on making sure that the glue spreads around, so I'm going to go ahead and close it up and then reopen it, but I'm going to make sure that the the trailing edge here of the fairing is sharp. So I'm going to focus my energy there, I'm going to make sure that that part is glued, the, the um, bottom or top piece doesn't overlap each other, that they line up, they want to line up sharply. Now the angle of, of the bottom fairing and the top fairing are different, and that's so that you get a little bit of a bend as you line up these leading edges. So if you do it slowly, and just keep working your way down with glue, you'll get a nice curved uh, effect to the bottom fairing. So there's your completed fairing. Now to glue this on, we're going to go ahead and run a little bit of glue on the trailing edge, I'm sorry, the, the flat edge of the bottom fairing, and we're going to line it up with the trailing edge of the wing. And so this is going to go um, flush with the bottom wing so that there's, there's no overhang or gap or air block here, so it's nice and flush, um, and then it, it's going to rest up against the fuselage. So you should end up with something like this. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tack down the top uh, top section, and, and you can do this in a you know really any order you'd like. But I like to start um, by pulling back here the top section, um, and then throwing down some glue just to just to get it uh, in place. So I'm going to run it on uh, on this uh, side closer to the wingtip, and then we're going to kind of shove this in at a 45 to the crevice here, um, just so you get a nice nice curve and the poster board and a nice clean effect for this wing root fairing. So this section was all done in, in real time here. I didn't cut it up just to show you how long it takes. It goes pretty quick uh, because the poster board really dries it nice and fast. Um, so once we have get that piece down we're going to go ahead and flip the plane over and we're going to glue um, the bottom uh, section here and then the top section. Now ideally the bottom fairing would line up I, I, uh, right with your um, the bottom of the fuselage. Uh, the way the curve happened on this one it didn't line up, my other one was a little bit cleaner. But, it, but essentially it doesn't, doesn't really matter for looks, you can get as close as you want. But ideally, um, it, you know, it, it doesn't actually affect your performance. So uh, you know, just get it glued down, get it close to the bottom as you can for a nice clean look. And uh, yeah, you're gonna love you're gonna love how it looks. So there it is, guys. Your completed Sonic Series and NP39.